Hello everyone, and welcome back to This is the Police, where we're on day 64 of our 180 long days till retirement, where the hockey team is on strike, garbage collection fee has increased, and a Christ icon discover was discovered in the foundation of a Buddhist temple. Who knows? Who knows with this town? I certainly don't. I got no idea what's going on. Story time. What's this, Martin? Think that'll cover breakfast? Good lord, Jack. You should knock. <laughs> don't worry, Martin. I don't care what kind of business you're up to. Although on second thought, scratch that. I'm very interested in your business. In fact, that's why I'm here. Do you have a lot of connections? Uh, depends on what you need. I want to keep my job. I've got another five years in me, at least. Oh, gosh. I want to prove my dismissal is illegal. You know someone who can help? Uh, Jack, are you sure you want to get involved in this, this fight? Martin, let's not, uh... I thought we were happy to be retiring. Toy? Oh, you noticed, Martin. Just like a teenager. Always on the move. Yeah. Hello. Is this Mr. Boyd? Last I checked, who's this? And where did you get my personal number? Um... When you work at the prosecutor's office, it's not too hard to find someone's phone number. The prosecutor's office? Uh, just a second. Martin, out. I need to take this. Aren't you in Martin's office? office. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, I understand. I'll go grab an ice cream. As for your little problem, Jack, I think we can work something out. Give me a couple of weeks. Weeks? Jack, what you're asking is... Yeah, okay, I get it. Now get out already. Jesus. I do not like Jack at all at this point. I'm sorry, what did you say your name was? I, um... My name is Lana. Lana Berman. I'm the deputy prosecutor of Freeburg. Well, one of the deputies. Not even the first deputy to tell me the truth. How can I help you, Miss Berman? Um... I don't know how to say this, Mr. Boyd. You see, Mr. Boyd, I I'm in line to be the next prosecutor of Freeburg, and, and apparently that's happening quite soon. Soon? Chia Broom was just re-elected for a new term. Yes, but she'll be resigning in February. She's, she's suffering from a heart condition, so she's chosen a replacement to carry out her term, and she chose me. You have no idea of the scandal, Mr. Boyd. I've only been at the prosecutor's office for half a year, and she chose me. It's incredible. That really is unbelievable, Miss Berman. Uh, but what's it got to do with me? I am very confused right now. I understand how this call would seem strange to you, Mr. Boyd, but Mrs. Broom said she... Well, she said that you have a lot going on, but you're the most honest official in the city. That's and funny. I really want to change the city for the better, and I swear that's what I want. Then I should meet you. I'm afraid Mrs. Broom was exaggerating. Oh, believe me, Mr. Boyd, Mrs. Broom is not one to exaggerate. I... I I'm sorry, Mr. Boyd, I need to run. Do you mind if I... well, if I call you later? Do I mind? Hmm, let me think. <laughs> no, I don't mind, Miss Berman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boyd. I have no idea what's going on, but that's how this game has been from the beginning. Oh, we have a stripe to give. Who shall we give it to? How about Shaw? He doesn't have one yet, and he's a good officer. All right, let's put in our music and get to work. What's this? Oh, yes. Um, a raise, I guess. I don't, I don't know. I've stopped caring about doing well at this game, and I'm just more interested in seeing what happens. <laughs> Noise from a garbage truck woke up a vagabond who was sleeping on a nearby bench. The homeless man became angry and went to scold the truck's driver. A fight soon erupted. It's really close to the police station. It'll only take like a minute for them to do that. Ta 
catchy jazz music. Slow day so far. There we go. Jose M Mama, I think that's how you pronounce that, reported a run-in with a pickpocket at the park. His wallet was stolen along with some documents and an expensive watch. I'm sure it was that red-haired brat he was rubbing all over me. That sounds more like a cat than a person. A red furred cat. I would not mind having a red furred cat. I like cats. I wouldn't mind any cat. Sitting quietly on a bench is a red haired guy who fits the description, but in the distance there's a woman struggling with a young man in a hood, shouting and clutching her bag. I would deal with the person who's currently being robbed. The guy in the hoodie notices the police and tries to escape. He stumbles and several wallets and pieces of jewelry come tumbling from his pockets. Get him with a taser. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not going to ignore someone actively being robbed just because someone thinks it's somebody else. Hello, I was contacted by a lawyer named Donald Horton Jr. who told me some wonderful news. It turns out I'm a distant relative of a Nigerian prince who recently died and he left me $15 billion. I only need to pay 20000 in gold bullion to open an account to receive the money. But I noticed the lawyer carries a pistol, so I decided to play it safe and call in a police escort to make sure everything goes smoothly. I'm very confused. Like, that's the most well-known scam in the book. What, 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 what? <laughs> Alright, public indecency out in the middle of nowhere. Phyllis Emery is clearly beside herself. This jerk took out his crooked dick in the middle of a crowded bus and started to poke me with it. God, it was so disgusting. I screamed and several of the men on the bus grabbed the pervert and wrestled him to the ground. I have no idea, yeah, I'm like, what is even this fraud case? I have no idea. Alright. But we're doing well. City Hall had a wall repainted by some hooligans. If the police can't do their job in a timely manner and send these criminals to prison, then I can spend their shift cleaning off the wall. We'll do what City Hall asks for once, because we actually can. Usually we physically can't. And so City Hall hates us. Public indecency report. So yeah, these guys are going to spend their whole day cleaning graffiti off of a wall. Oh boy. Okay. An eyewitness saw a man in a pickup truck cruising down the road, stopping at every parked car and siphoning off the fuel into spare tanks he carried in back. Passerby went up to him, saw the guy had a gun, and ran. I'd do that, too. Actually, I don't want to send, like, all of my best people. Because we also have this one. An elderly man called the station in a rage. I went to the drugstore to buy a hearing aid and some pain reliever, and the guy behind the counter tried to sell me cocaine. <laughs> this sounds like a false alarm. But we'll we'll take it seriously, as we do. Gosh, stop having so many. Please, I don't have people for this. An armed man entered a publishing office and demanded a copy of the new novel by writer Ivan Baikov, which had just gone to the press. And alarms are coming in from Heels, Hell on Wheels Motor Show. Eyewitnesses report that a group of attackers broke the window, ran inside, stole six luxury cars. According to one onlooker, they all drove off in the same direction. You should be able to catch them all. I don't have this many police officers. I don't think that just two. The suspect has been sighted. He's squatted down next to someone's car. One end of the hose in the gas tank, the other end in the suspect's mouth. He's trying to siphon fuel. Oh, this is a good way to catch him on fire. He sees the police and pulls out a gun from his rear holster. He shoots wildly and misses. Shoot him. 
that that's what the police officers carry guns for. Oh my god, we have so much going on. Um, I don't have enough people. What's this one? During a performance, someone began shouting racist speech at a black singer and fired several shots from a pistol. The room descended into panic and everyone ran for the exits. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Of course. I don't have anybody to send. Yeah, they won't even go. It's too serious for two people. <sighs> but we're about to get more people back in, a whole bunch, so we can send lots of people to that. We can at least do that one. Nothing else, but that one's fine. All right, what's going on at the city center? A passerby reported a dark sedan speeding through red lights, swerving from side to side. He's got to be drunk or stoned. Just thought you'd want to know. I mean, we got to do what we got to do. I don't know what to do about this. I don't. I've tried putting them in, <clears throat> in like, every possible order. All right, we still don't have enough because we need a minimum of seven, so we can't. I don't have any. I'm going to have you retreat then. Because otherwise we're going to lose police officers. And I don't want to do that. A police cruiser caught up with the sedan, which is swerving dangerously all over the road. The sedan suddenly turns into an underground parking garage. <clears throat> I mean, you're never going to get in front of him if you just follow him in something that narrow. We got pharmaceuticals. We're going to have the mafia sell it for us. All right. We managed to survive a whole day. We're so good at life. Freeburg mail truck missing. Nursing home to get cable TV. Girl sets house house fire to watch firefighters. The mafia like us. City Hall hates us. Still. So let's do another day. I felt dizzy while climbing at the stairs. Can't the day up. No. I need all of my peoples. We don't have that many police officers, so we need all of them. Oh my god. We're gonna fire him, I guess. We don't need... Oh gosh, stuff is coming in immediately. I'm gonna take all of it. I've never done that before. Factory worker Vitaly Samsonov quarreled with the head of the plant and attacked him. Colleagues called the police but are afraid to intervene because Samsonov is as strong as an ox... He took us all by surprise. About two dozen Amish men chased everyone out of the city dump and blocked all access. The Amish community claims that the land belongs to them and is evidence they're presenting a handwritten document. An eyewitness reports that they're not behaving very peaceably and there are hardly any weapons aside but there are hardly any weapons aside from a few pitchforks. I mean the Amish I don't know if they're, like, not dealing with technology would go to things like weapons, like guns. I really don't know. And I mean, I know most current Amish communities will have, like, technology for emergencies, but they won't use it on a regular basis. I don't know. I'm not Amish, obviously. <laughs> I'm using a computer right now. Vitelli Samsonov is holding the plant manager over a vat of milk. The manager is crying, kicking his feet, and then he wets his pants. <clears throat> well. 
some of these things are just so gross. Like, some of the things that you can offer to do are really bad. And I don't know why you would ever do them. <clears throat> it's a great way to get people killed. And that's not the point of this game. Like, this game gets dark extremely quickly, and I, I don't like it at all because of that. It doesn't... It seems like a completely different game than it was before now. We've received numerous calls from visitors at the local zoo who saw a drunken zoo employee open the cheetah cage. The dangerous cats are running amok and have started to attack people. Well, that's not good. I feel like three officers isn't enough for that, though. But I guess I'm sending three people. Disorderly conduct. The caretaker at the cemetery reported strange sounds coming from the crypt. I'm afraid it's the dead finally come back. These are dark days. What? So far, nothing in this game has actually been supernatural. So I have a feeling that this is a false report. Come on, everybody's back. So I'm going to send two people. No SWAT. Wouldn't it be offenders caught because it was like a whole bunch of Amish men and women and people? I don't know. I don't remember if it just said men. A man wearing a ski mask entered the LifeWire Consumer Electronics Store. He pulled out a gun and demanded all the money in the most expensive toaster. The store's security guard was fast on his feet and managed to knock the gun out of the robber's hands, but then he grabbed a sales assistant by the throat and he's threatening to strangle her unless demands are met. Alright, it will allow for just two on that. Because I think we just need to stop sending as many people as we can, because we'll never have people at the police station if we do that. So I think we need to start actually being able to assess how many people are necessary and trying to get more good outcomes. The door to the vault opens and there's a rustling down in the darkness. Shine a flashlight. Two homeless men jump out of the darkness. They're carrying a shovel and some jewelry. They don't want to give up their plunder throw e so easily. Use your taser. We found jewelry. We got a lot of money last time. A man in a ski mask in the middle of the store holding a girl by her throat and yelling at employees. The man releases the girl and starts to run, then enters a room with a bunch of refrigerators and disappears. Expand the search. Yeah, buddy. Nobody dies on my watch. A gang stormed the casino and went straight for the utility room. The eyewitness who called the police said he heard gunshots and then gang members started carrying out some boxes. I'm gonna send. Hopefully that's enough. Like, I'm always worried because I've been sending the max whenever I can. And obviously, it's a, if it's one or two, you have to send the max. Um, but, you know, for the big ones, and more and more of them are requiring, or have maxes for more and more officers, it's just something where I think it makes more sense. I don't know. Alright, we've got another thing coming in. The owner of a grocery saw a car drive onto the sidewalk and knock over a girl who was playing with her roller skates. Then the bastard stopped, waited a second, backed up over the child again. I've heard that's how the Chinese do it back home, but are we really going to get a, let them get away with it here? Eh, that's disgusting. Alright, we did it. That's good. Oh, and we got an automatic weapon. Let's ask the Mafia to sell it. Oh gosh, two things at once. Frank Zucker reports that a young blonde in a short red dress approached him at the bar and offered to go to bed with him for cash. I've never laid down with a whore. Can you believe this bitch? Alright, we'll send three, because we've got three coming back in right now. For this one. Hopefully it's enough. Mr. Boyd, have you prepared the corpses I asked for? No. I'm not going to. A man with a strong Spanish accent said that a dozen people are being held against their will in the basement of a cafe. The hostess of the cafe seeks 
out needy immigrants, gains their trust, promises mountains of gold, and imprisons them, makes them work round the clock for stale food. According to the man who called, he was one of the slaves, but he managed to escape. The woman also has five armed guards who regularly beat up the least productive workers. That just doesn't sound realistic. It really doesn't. That sounds like a movie plot, but, you know, horrible things do happen. The blonde is his ex-girlfriend. She'd come to the bar with her friends, and Frank saw her and decided to teach her a lesson. That's disgusting. Four police officers entered the nightclub and started arresting people for having fun. What? They bullied the girls, and the guys got angry and beat them up and humiliated them. One of the one of them put the gun into a patron's mouth and shouted at the others, and another cop knocked out a man's front teeth with the butt of the gun, of his gun. The club manager has serious doubts that these are even real police officers and suspects that one of his competitors might have sent them over to cause trouble. Is anybody else going to be back in time? These two will be, or these three will be, because we're pretty close to the end of the day here, so I feel like I can send a whole bunch of people. The police found a secret tunnel into the basement and descend into a very dark, smelly room. The man notices the police, shouts something, and quickly disappears inside. Inspect the room. The police are taking enemy fire. Return fire. Yes. Nobody died. I love it when nobody dies. This seems very serious, so. We've got fake police officers. That's just never good. Oh my goodness, we actually have new frames? This is so amazing. So her... Her son? I, I don't think it's likely that it was her son. So he comes in. He shows her the bills. He cries about them. Oh, here she doesn't have the thing. Like that. Because, look, it's not in her hand. We can't see his other hand, so we hope that he has it already. Well, I'm assuming that's where it would be. So these would have to be in this order. Hmm. Or it could also be the sun opens the door for him, and then he comes in, and then this, or this, but I guess not. Maybe we need more still. I don't know. We didn't get new frames in that one for, like, ages, so I really don't know what's been going on with it. I have no idea. All right. Oh my god, you want reinforcements, really? Come on, it's already 3 a.m. We want to end our day. Jiminy Cricket. <sighs> it's insane. Insane. But they'll get out there soon enough, then we'll be able to end our day once they resolve the problem. I had a feeling that one was going to ask for reinforcements, too, because it was just such a serious one. Well, none of our police officers are dead. Yay, nobody died. It's always the best when nobody dies. All right, day 66, but we're going to see that next time. So if you enjoyed this episode of This is the Police, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We'll see this story next time. And as always, I'm the Purple Pegasus, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.